too, so people understand how you grew up and how you became the person you are today. Basically. Okay. Sure. So you can start. Hi, everybody. I'm Lily McNair, the eighth president of Tuskegee University. I'm so thrilled to be part of this community and happy to get to know all of you and the ways in which we can support you. I was born in Fort Gordon, Georgia. My father was in the Army, and I was born there at Dwight Eisenhower Hospital. We only lived there for three months before my father was transferred to Arizona. We lived in Fort Huachuca, Arizona for three years. I still remember days when I played outside in the sun with that red clay, kind of like the red clay of Georgia, uh, in the sun as a little kid. Then after three years there, my father was transferred to Fort Dix, New Jersey, and that's where I grew up. When my father left the military, we lived in a little town right next to Fort Dix called Browns Mills, where many of the kids that I knew had fathers who were in the military, Fort Dix, the Army base, and McGuire Air Force Base. So I lived in New Jersey, for many years, I think of that as my hometown, even though I say I'm a Georgia peach because I was born in Georgia. I am the oldest of four children in my family. Uh, four years after me, my brother Cameron, he and I both went to Princeton University, but at different times. And then four years younger than Cameron is David. My brother David went to Rutgers University and my sister Naomi, who's two years younger than David, went to Douglas College, which is part of Rutgers University. My sister and I are 10 years apart. She always jokes and says that when she was eight years old, I left her and went to college. So she was very upset that I left her there with two older brothers. I think she's forgiven me a little bit by now. But we grew up in a very diverse community. As I said um, earlier, my mother is Japanese, my father's African American, and many of the kids in our neighborhood had mothers who were, who were Japanese, Korean, Puerto Rican, from the Philippines, and so on, and fathers who were in the military, who traveled the world and met the loves of their life. So our high school had a great, great mixture of kids from parents who are from all over the world. And I think that's one of the things that has always helped me to be very open and very accepting of people from diverse backgrounds. Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to go to Princeton University. And some people would say, how did this little African-American girl know anything about the Ivy League, know anything about Princeton? Well, this is how it happened. I was eight years old, and I remember uh, watching the news with my mother. And on the news, it was reported that the son or nephew of a Japanese high-ranking official graduated from Princeton University. So I said to my mother, ah, oh, that sounds pretty good. I think I'm going to go to Princeton. And my mother said, Lily, girls are not accepted at Princeton because at that time, Princeton was all male. And I said, well, you know what? By the time it's time for me to go to high school, they'll be accepting girls, and I'm going to go to Princeton. And my mother said, but Lily, Princeton is very expensive. We don't have that kind of money. I said, that's OK. I'm going to get scholarships. I'm going to Princeton. And that's what happened. I had my eyes set on Princeton University which was only about 40 miles north of where we grew up. But as a little kid, something in me said, well, if it was good enough for this Japanese high-ranking official's son, it's good enough for me. And I had my eyes set on that. I, did, I applied to Princeton. I applied to Rutgers, other schools in the Washington, D.C. area. I did not apply to any other Ivy League schools. It was not my intention to go to an Ivy League school. I wanted to go to Princeton. And I have to say, I was right. My parents were very pleased that I had scholarships to go to Princeton University. I loved being at Princeton. Princeton, being a student at Princeton, a young black woman, 
opened up my world. Yes, there were difficult times. Yes, there were times when I looked around and I'm the only black or woman in the classroom. Yes, there were times when I thought, you know, some of these students went to prep schools. I would never heard of what a prep school or a boarding school was. Never heard of it in all my life. But I knew that the students who went to those schools had an advantage over me. But I never let that keep me from doing my best. So I made the best of Princeton. And during my times at Princeton, I was a, a resident assistant. I was an RA. So I got to know a lot of students from all walks of life. And I have to say that my core group of friends, the majority of whom were African-American students, they were my supports. They were our, we were each other's support. We helped each other to do our best and exceed the expectations at Princeton University. So I was very pleased when it was time for me to graduate and go to graduate school, I applied to uh, graduate schools in clinical psychology and I was accepted to the schools and made my choice regarding what's the best school where I can do my best, where I can use my knowledge of psychology here at Princeton University. And I'm happy to say that my years at Stony Brook University, where I met my husband, who is a graduate of Morehouse College, those years kind of extended my process of becoming a young African-American woman and a scholar.